Miliary tuberculosis is not a new presentation no, by me, but I'm repeating it. The content is the same with what I've published earlier. Some people felt that some of the words here overlap, though I didn't find that at my end. However, I would not want anybody not to get the exact pieces of info. So I'm going ahead right now to reproduce miliary tuberculosis. Thanks for visiting my channel. Let's go. Miliary tuberculosis, miliary is taken from millet like in appearance. Miliary tuberculosis is a clinical tuberculosis from hematogenous or lymphatic spread of mycobacterium tuberculosis. This is millet. In some countries, they have up to five different types of millet. So this is to make it clearer that miliary tuberculosis is coined from millet like in appearance, no grains, no, okay? Let's start by talking about prevention. If you don't want to have miliary tuberculosis or you don't want that man or woman to have miliary tuberculosis, treat the latent tuberculosis infection. At best, let there be BCG administration if you are living in endemic regions of the world with TB, get BCG at bed, please. Then, in case there's anyone with already known pulmonary tuberculosis, please don't give up. Non-relenting treatment of pulmonary tuberculosis with DOT, that is direct observed therapy, you know, for anyone with pulmonary tuberculosis. If you can, Take the next move to click on this very link. You're going to get my full presentation on tuberculosis A to Z. So if you click on this, this will take you there. Back to miliary tuberculosis. Like I said earlier, it's a clinical tuberculosis disease. Now coming from hematogenous or lymphatic spread of mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is either from the primary infection or there is just the reactivation of a latent tuberculosis infection and then we are faced with wide dissemination throughout the body. The miliary is coming from millet-like in appearance and miliary tuberculosis could be extra pulmonary, meaning outside the lungs or could be pulmonary form of tuberculosis. So, miliary TB could even be within the lungs itself. All we are concerned about is the form of that tuberculosis. So, it could be within the lungs, could be outside the lungs. Miliary TB could be either pulmonary tuberculosis or extra pulmonary tuberculosis. I just you know, made mention of that. When we're talking about extra pulmonary tuberculosis, many other organs could be involved, like central nervous system where the brain could be involved, the liver, the spleen, you know, all organs could be involved, in the bone marrow, and so on. Miliary tuberculosis affects multiple organs, needless to say again, right? Miliary TB is about 3% of tuberculosis, like heart disease, you know, pulmonary tuberculosis, any form of tuberculosis, if you put all of them together, miliary is about 3%. But then someone will say that is pretty low. Oh, well, 1% could be a lot of people. Progression from primary focus. This is pretty important because we've talked about miliary TB, that it has spread to other organs from the primary focus, which should be the lungs. So bacilli will spread through the lymphatics to the brain, the liver, the spleen, bone marrow, vascular organs, and so on. It is expected to heal by granulomatous encapsulation over weeks to months when immunity is pretty strong and treatment has been embarked upon. The healed and latent foci can reactivate years or decades after. 
still on progression. Acute or generalized malaria tuberculosis has a rapid course. Gisetin granulomatous reaction is a hallmark of acute malaria TB. Energy tuberculosis is an uncommon form of malaria TB without granulomatous formation. The risk factors here will be all factors that could lead to immune suppression. Because when your immunity is strong, it's not likely that you will run into this. But when immunity is down, then after having pulmonary tuberculosis, you may likely come down with malaria tuberculosis. So age, infants and young children, comorbidities, the reason why I'm not going to give further explanation is I don't want to waste your time because I'm still going to explain further later on. Comorbidities, HIV and other immune suppressant. Remember, anyone with HIV right now should be screened for pulmonary tuberculosis. And anyone with TB should be screened for HIV. Immune compromised sex. In children, it is because the immunity is not yet mature. Remember I said I was playing for that, right? Immature immunity. That's why children are down with miliary TB. Then why would older people be having miliary TB if that is the issue? It's because immunity is weighing down in them. Or these factors like HIV and pregnancy. Pregnancy has a way of suppressing immunity on its own. So the chances will increase in the phase of pregnancy, diabetes mellitus, chronic renal failure. Other risk factors will include corticosteroids use on a long term basis, tissue necrosis factor alpha blockers, disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs, chemotherapy, malignancy, all these conditions will suppress immunity. Okay, alcohol, chronic alcoholic states. It appears that there is an uncertain relative increase in military TB amongst African Americans. What are the possible clinical features? Fever, night sweats, anorexia, weight loss, malaise, cough, dyspnea, pleuritic chest pain, gastrointestinal tract pain. Essentially, all clinical signs and symptoms of tuberculosis. In addition to all signs and symptoms of pulmonary tuberculosis, it depends on the organs affected. You know, miliary would have spread far away, right? So there may be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. There may be headache when the brain is involved, when the liver is involved, epitomegaly, when the spleen is involved, splenomegaly. I mean, meningismus, and you understand that, that that means a state of meningeal irritation. And then when there's meningeal irritation, you know what will happen. Neck stiffness, rigidity, and the lines. Ascites in the liver, jaundice in the liver, positive tuberculin skin test, adrenal failure when adrenal gland is involved, TB peritonitis, TB meningitis, TB laryngitis. It's just spreading everywhere. Now, how can we make the diagnosis of this horrible disease condition? It is mostly missed. And I don't blame anyone for missing that because it is not specific in presentation, right? Most will be diagnosed during postmortem or autopsy, particularly in HIV patients. That diagnosis will be made at that stage when they're already gone. Now, the laboratory diagnosis. There may or not be DIC, that is disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, increased ESR, increased ALP, increased bilirubin, decreased RBC, decreased white blood cells, but there may be increased white blood cells with left shift, meaning higher number of immature cells, usually found in infection or inflammation. The sodium level will drop, O2 cell will drop, platelets will drop, then there will be bleeding, then we can be faced with pancytopenia. And when we are dealing with pancytopenia, that should give us the concern that 
This minority B is infiltrating the bone marrow. So bone marrow infiltration will lead to pancytopenia. We can have lumbar puncture and have CSF for cells, tissue biopsy, you no, know, um, tuberculosis skin test or interferon gamma release acid. Alcohol acid, fast bacilli, nucleic acid amplification test, and HIV screening, all these could be done. Monoscopy examination with choroidal tubercles. Radiologically, chest x ray could be done with reticular nodular pattern of miliary TB throughout the lungs. Remember, I said it could be pulmonary, could be extra pulmonary. But in half of everyone that will have this condition, the chest x ray will be normal. Then we will make call for CT or PET or guidance scans. Then what are the possible differential diagnoses? Since it is non specific, it might be pulmonary tuberculosis, non tuberculous mycobacteria, tumor metastasis, secondary to all those organs, might be histoplasmosis or cosidiodomycosis, it might even be blastomycosis, it may be pneumocystic universal pneumonia in HIV patient, formerly known as pneumocystic carinine pneumonia, it might be legionella, bistacosis, brucellosis, or parasitic infection. Might be varicella or cytomegalovirus, flu, measles, or lymphoma. Might be mesothelioma, sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, or foreign body. Now, the treatment. If you're familiar with the treatment of tuberculosis, or you've listened to my presentation on the treatment of tuberculosis or my TB A to Z, then you have no problem. Okay, let's go. The treatment here, like I've said, is the same as if you are treating pulmonary tuberculosis. For full information on that, please kindly click on this very link. There, you are going to find tuberculosis A to Z. But the difference we are faced with when we are treating pulmonary tuberculosis is that we will treat the patient for longer duration, particularly for children and immunocompromised, and those are the people that are worried the most. Then. If the central nervous system is involved, then the duration must be very long. Culture and sensitivity will also help in the face of multidrug resistance strains. If that is the issue, click on this very link that will help with multidrug resistance strain. Lastly, prevention once again, but I will not waste your time. Treat latent TB, BCG in endemic regions. But let me add to that. Even in advanced countries, where TB is not prevalent. In some communities there, it is possible to find TB in certain communities. If that is the case, let the children delivered in such communities have BCG at birth. And don't give up on the treatment of pulmonary tuberculosis. We've done. Check my full presentation on tuberculosis A to Z. Thanks for listening. You can see that I'm listening to your comments and I've reproduced this. You are free to pass your comments again. I appreciate it. Please kindly share this with everyone.